This is Internet Marketing. Hello and welcome to the Internet Marketing Podcast brought to you by Site Visibility. I'm your host, Scott Colnup, and with me today is Rick Elmore, founder of Simply Noted. And we're going to be discussing the power of handwritten notes for building meaningful relationships. Rick, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Scott. It's great to be here. No problem. Now, we're 650 something episodes in at this point, and I had a quick scan of some of the episodes, and I don't think we've ever covered this topic in this way before. So this is a first in a long-standing podcast. So congratulations for that. I appreciate it. I think uh, handwritten notes are often kind of like an afterthought. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome to be able to talk about it. We're going to be talking about the beauty of analog uh, noting, handwritten notes, how you got started. And just as a starting point, do you want to describe a little bit more about what Simply Noted is, who you are, and just describe a little bit more to our listeners about who Simply Noted is for. Yeah. Well, first, a little bit about my background, so this makes sense. Um, yeah. So I started off, really, my background's in athletics. I played college and professional sports, a uh, Division One football player, and then was drafted in the NFL in 2010. Played for three seasons. And then when I was finished, I jumped into corporate medical device sales and marketing. I uh, worked for two of the largest medical companies in the world, Stryker and Strawman. Mm -hmm. um, worked with neurosurgeons, orthopedic surgeons, oral surgeons, um, and then had a pretty good career there as well. My first year in court in the corporate world, I was rookie of the year uh, for the U.S. region, and then the next five years, I was either number one or top or top one percent or top five sales reps in the company. But in 2017, I just there was there was something missing. There was just like an itch I couldn't scratch, even though I was having you know some pretty decent success um, in, in the corporate world. I went back and did my MBA um, at the University of Arizona. I still have a couple of classes left, but I, I left when I started this business. I was in a marketing class about 14 months into my program, and I had a marketing professor talking about the success rates in marketing, and everything was super marginal. I mean, super low, like single-digit success rates, it's going over email, direct mail, um, print mail, cold calling, door knocking, like everything was super marginal, like not exciting at all. And then the, the professor, you know, kind of half-heartedly jokingly ends the, the, the lecture saying, hey guys, you know, it still works, you know, maybe even better than, than ever is a good old fashioned handwritten note. <laughs> um, I was like, man, that's an absolute no brainer, but there's no easy way to do it. You know, we're all extremely busy nowadays, right? We ha we have hundreds of notifications going off in our emails and our phones all the time. We're being pulled in every direction. Everybody needs things done yesterday. And I had 400 clients at the time. And I was like, there's just, just no way to sit down and write a thank you note or, you know, hey, can we book a meeting? Something like that. But, you know, I, I started researching, you know, some some people that were kind of doing something that was kind of like a, a scaled way of doing it, but they were focused in terrible industries. One was focused in uh, the wedding industry, which mm -hmm. I thought was just absolutely terrible because anybody who's been married understands bridezillas and things change and it's super stressful and it takes forever to get anything done. And then somebody else was doing it like a B to C, like just, you know, high turnover, you know, low, <laughs> low value client. I was like, why isn't this being done for business? Wow. Um, because they have the systems in place, they have the ability to pay, you know, they have um, clients all over the place that they can use this for. So I had a classmate of mine in my cohort, we sat down, um, started researching, putting some work into it, worked with a mailing house here in Phoenix, Arizona, um, you know, flew some technology in from South America, China. And um, really, what we we're trying to do is figure out a way to scale handwritten notes. So send mm. hundreds or thousands of real genuine personal handwritten notes. And what we started with was a pen plotter. And what I did was over a month, it literally took me a month of trying to figure out how to use a pen plotter, like hand loading, you know, a, a note to this machine. They were terrible. But we wrote about 500 handwritten notes with this pen plotter. And I pulled a list from like a library resource here locally of clients I was not working with. And I thought like, this would be a cool kind of way to test this. Like, let me send out some handwritten letters to clients I don't work with 
and see if it helps me book some appointments. So um, of those 500 notes that were ridiculously hard to write because the machine was so bad, um, I had over 30 doctors call me back, which was absolutely insane. Like doctors never called a rep. Mm. And these doctors were like really shocked. They were like, first, like, hey, Rick, like, this is really cool. Like nobody ever sends me a handwritten note. Um, like this offer sounds good. Let's, let's book a lunch and talk about it. And from those 30 ish doctors who call me back, I had a $50,000 a month quota. I got $280,000 in sales, you know, $20,000 in commission. And I was just like on fire, like the entrepreneurial, they call it the entrepreneurial seizure. It just happened like for like four or six weeks. I was just like, on pure euphoria. Cause it was just working. I was excited about it. Had the, the million light bulb explosions go off and i was like this is it i know this can work we just validated it like we're going to turn this into a business so fast forward (laughs) almost five years it's been a crazy ride you know we've actually built our own writing robot we've invested over eight hundred thousand dollars into this writing robot it's the only purposely built writing robot in the world it's completely automated completely vertically integrated into our systems we've built the most advanced handwriting engine most advanced software. We work with hundreds uh, of top Fortune 100 and, and 500 companies. I mean, it's it's been a really cool experience growing this uh, this business. There is so much I want to ask you about all of this. I'm, I'm kind of in my mind. I'm like, where do I start? But um, I guess <laughs> one, uh, just so I understand, so I don't really know what a pen plotter is. And so what I'm trying to understand is the difference between the original technology you started with and where you're at today. Can you describe the differences and how that's evolved? Yeah. So what a pen plotter is, this is writing machine that was basically used by like architects back in like the eighties and nineties to draw like straight lines, like before really like nice printers were available. There's so many different applications for it. It's an open source, basically a machine that moves left, right, forward, backwards, up and down. People use it in medical spaces. They use it in drawing, engineering. I mean, there's tons of different use applications and people try to do it with pens you know they try to use it to write stuff the big problem with it is there's no dedicated software to the machine um it's all third party open sourced like really bad buggy software Mm -hmm. there's no paper feed so literally somebody has to sit there and hand feed it so like you have to put something down hit a button make the machine go write it. It's not smart. It's not intuitive. And then there's no handwriting engine. So like, there's no way to like effectively create handwriting styles, add variability, um, ligatures, kerning, um, you know, authentic, like writing characteristics. And like the first version of our handwritten notes, <laughs> I mean, they basically look like printed notes because they were just so bad and the technology was so bad. Um, but I was just so, you know, inspired and dedicated and obsessed with building this company we figured out a way to build our own writing robot so we made tons of advancements on it um we use a a gantry based system with a paper feed and our own software and handwriting engine and why that's important is like you know if you're working with businesses that need to do high volumes or high like amounts of handwritten notes in an efficient way it needed to be done you know so if you think of a client who needs to send, you know, 10,000 handwritten notes out immediately. And most businesses now are like, hey, everything needs to be done yesterday. Um, When you're trying to send, you know, 10,000 handwritten notes that take about five minutes per letter to write, you know, you need to have super efficient robots that have high capacity, that work well, and have an army of them. And that's what we've been able to build over here at Simply Noted. You talked about Professor that exposed you to the benefits of handwritten notes. And what year was that roughly? So it was right at the end of 2017. 2017. And so between the end of your football career, which was, when was that? Around 2013? Is that about right? 13, yeah. So you had a business in between 2013 and 17 as you went back to get your MBA. Mm -hmm. I was in corporate medical sales, yeah, and marketing, yep. So Simply Noted wasn't even the business in operation while you were undertaking your MBA. Is that correct? Have I understood the timeline? No, it was kind of like my side hustle, like right. baby that was just being born and thought about. So it was just kind of like an incubation. Yeah. But everything you described there about the pen plotting method, I look at that through a product, uh, for a product manager's lens. You had really validated your idea with that early MVP. 
Yeah. So we knew that the product was valuable, but the technology yeah. was terrible. <laughs> so right. The yeah. technology needed to be um, improved drastically. Um, and that, and I think was the only reason why there isn't a lot of players in this space, because there's an absolute need for something like this in today's digital age. Yeah. Um, and the reason that is, is because it, it's so hard. It, I mean, it, it's taken us two years of just research development and going through iteration after iteration to get <laughs> to, to a, a functioning, you know, writing robot. Prior to 2017, before you started experimenting with handwritten methods like this, were you doing it the same way as everyone else? Was it emails, LinkedIn? What, what was your kind of method of outreach? Yeah, so I had, um, I have a, you know, my background in athletics you yeah. know, really prepared me for my life after sport. You know, just, you know, massive amounts of work for a tiny bit of, you know, gratification. You know, it, it, it takes years to find success, you know, as an athlete. It takes, you know, hundreds of hours of working out and working on your craft to, to develop skills that are, you know, at an elite level, you know? So what I, what's made me successful in my sales career was just everything that made me successful as an athlete, just working hard, you know, I, I mean, I, I would literally just figure out ways to scale like my, my productivity. It was just knocking doors, doing tons of phone calls. Um, I had an email tool that helped me, you know, automate some emails. I had a social tool that helped me automate some social, but eventually, you know, to, to scale, you know, a lot larger than that. Like, I, I mean, it was impossible because mm. I can only have so many hours in a day to knock doors or make phone calls or even do so many emails. But yeah, I mean, my, my background was really just like activity equals results. But like, as I've, grown and become more experienced in my career now it's like smart activity equals better results so i, I just i work a lot more on the thought behind the activity now um okay. it has to be more impactful if that makes sense yeah uh, it sounds like the behaviors from your football career carried over really well to what you're doing now but i, I am interested behaviors aside were you you just talked about reaching that level reaching the nfl is such an elite place to be so you have to dedicate kind of all your time to that. Was business and entrepreneurship and other things like that on your mind during your football career? Yeah, I always thought I was going to like own a gym. Um, <laughs> it's just like, you know, that's where I grew up was in the gym. Um, we worked out for three hours a day and then we were on the field for another three hours and then in the classroom for a couple hours. Um, when I say classroom and in the meeting rooms, you know, studying our, our own plays our own film and our, our competitors film so just being physically active and in that hard work that came along with that was just literally ingrained in who i am so i thought i'd be yeah. in the, the gym world like the training world but when i got outside of the nfl i, I just realized you know there's just so much more out there and i kind of become obsessed with being in business and, and entrepreneurship and um you know there's a lot of stuff that excites me about that Number one, it's new. It's something that's completely different. But learning marketing and sales and building businesses, that has become my new passion. I'm just really excited about you know, everything that's out there. And what is not out there, like we simply noted, there, there isn't anything out there like this um, at this level. And creating something is really exciting for me now as well. And so take me back to just maybe shortly after that professor introduced you to handwritten notes and you started to experiment. Um, remind me just how many in that first version do you remember sending out? I think you said 500 or so. Yeah, it, it may have been a little less than that. Yeah, but yeah. it was just a, a quick batch because that was the list that I pulled. I think that was like the most they would let you pull for free. <laughs> so yeah. I think it was just whatever they let me pull for free. And um, yeah, I just thought it was just, you know, think about it. If 99% out of 100 you can get in front of your client, it's going to increase your success rate. You know, I was cold, cold calling and knocking doors and I had like a 25% like success rate of talking to somebody. So yeah. I was like, man, this is going to make me so much more successful. And it's just so different. If you think about it in 2022, 2023, we live in an every day is more digital more than ever. You know, there's a new software tool coming out, right? There's a new automation tool, you know, a MarTech tool. So going analog, you know, going to something physical that someone can touch, it's so different and it's more memorable and it's more authentic. Um, so it just, to me, it made no, it made, it was a no brainer. It was like, this makes absolute sense. Like 
I'm going to stand out. This is going to be different. This is going to be more memorable. That's going to help me win. And I think in business today, like always, like relationships matter. Um, and number one way to develop relationships is really to spend time with somebody, you know, be authentic, show you care, help them solve problems. But you can't do that at scale. Like, how are you going to mm. do that at scale? You can only give someone so much time every single day. So I thought this was just a great way to start the relationship, engage them, stay top of mind. And trying to figure out a way to scale it and automate it was what was going to be the, the huge endeavor. And do you see opportunities at the moment in where you are today to scale it even further? Or do you think you've kind of reached the limit of what's possible to be scaled? It's no, we're nowhere. We haven't even scratched the surface. Right. Um, I, I believe, you know, within five years, this product is going to be so highly sought after because people are going to be, you know, especially after COVID, you know, people are, are more detached even more than ever. And if you, I mean, if you think about it, like you're so burnt out on your phone. Like I, I hate my phone because it's just nothing but notification hell. Like it's like LinkedIn notification, Twitter notification. Even if you turn off all your notifications, your phone figures out how to notify you about something. And it's just so <laughs> like ridiculous. So I think businesses are going to look for ways to go analog and, and take, mm. you know, online to offline. And this is a very efficient and affordable tool for businesses to use. But yeah, we haven't even scratched the surface. Um, there's just so many use cases. Think about it. Like everybody has a client, everybody has a relationship. You know, what are you doing to give them the, the best customer experience possible? What are you doing to increase lifetime value? What are you doing to solidify that that loyal loyalty to your brand and 99 percent of like you know people don't have an answer for that because mm -hmm. oh we send them an automated email like cool so does every other company <laughs> you know like oh we have the best sales team yeah so does every other company you know so like what are you doing to to engage them in a way that's going to help you stand out win build loyalty get more referrals and a handwritten note's just a a great way to automate it, you know, mm. and that's what we're trying to do for our clients. So one thing that stands out to me is uh, you talking about you being one of the only companies that's doing this in the world, maybe the only company that's doing this type of thing. I'm wondering if you have any of your, I imagine you've got your own anecdotal data, but do you have any, is there any science or any third party data that lends itself to the benefits of handwritten notes over other mediums like emails, like letters. Is there anything like that that exists? Yeah. Um, well, first, we're, we are not the only company. When I say the only company, we're the only company in the world that's built our own purposely driven handwriting robot. We, there are a couple of people that are using like off the shelf pen plotters, but um, they will not be able to scale to the levels of where Simply Note will be able to scale. Um, because the technology just, just doesn't allow you to do that. Yeah, but yeah there's tons of great studies. Um, there, I always quote this American Express customer service study. Um, well, first, like handwritten notes have a 300% higher open rate than print mail. So if you think about that, if you do like a direct mail campaign, a postcard campaign, almost seven out of every $10 is going straight in the trash. So if you think about that, I mean, you're wasting tons of budget. When you think of uh, um, client retention, you know, a handwritten note's a great way to build a relationship. And American Express found out with just a simple 5% improvement in client retention, your profits year over year will be 25 to 95% higher, which as a business owner, that makes complete sense if you can cut your attrition rates down. When it comes to customer appreciation or customer experience, customers are, who feel appreciated are five times more likely to make a repeat purchase. So you want to talk about lifetime value. That's a great way to do that is, is help clients feel appreciated through a handwritten note. They're five times more likely to forgive a mistake. They're four times more likely to make a referral. So I want to talk about growing your business organically. You know, if you can help your clients feel more appreciated and have more loyalty to your brand, they're going to refer their friends and family. And then they're seven times more likely to try new offerings. So um, if you're a business that releases new products, it's easier to upsell your current clients than add a new client. We all know mm -hmm. that. Um, it costs way more money to try to bring on new clients. And there's always a reason and you should always have tools to try to acquire new clients. But what we try to do is like help our clients realize like, hey, just develop that relationship, make them stick around longer, help them grow your business organically. Because everyone's so, always so focused on acquisition, 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 but it's like retention, retention, retention. That's interesting, yeah. actually. The um. So I, I'd been thinking about pretty much what you just said there, the use of handwritten notes, notes for acquisition. 
But do you find that, I guess, once you've won a client or in the different verticals that you support, do you find that there's value in writing handwritten notes or producing handwritten notes continuously throughout a relationship? So I always say we drink our own champagne over here. We, we use our <laughs> handwritten notes to, uh, to for client acquisition, but we use them every single month for client retention. Right. Um, we, we, we have like a monthly hit list of you know, a certain client base that we want to stay top of mind. And I know they know we're using our service, but yep. you know, in that mailbox that is completely empty nowadays in 2022, mm. um, almost 2023, like nobody's competing in that mailbox and it's an easy place to stand out. The average person receives less than five handwritten notes a year. So if you think about you go to the mailbox, right, where nobody else is fighting for their attention and it's bills and crap mail and print mail. Yeah. And then you see this nice, beautiful, you know, high quality handwritten card. It's almost like, you know, it's like a treat. You know, it's yeah. like they appreciate it. It's like you kind of get that little small endorphin rush. Mm. You know, when you're looking at all the bills, you see this nice handwritten note. So I think, yeah, we use it for both acquisition and retention. But yeah, I mean, there's limitless or unlimited amount of ways to use this in the acquisition and retention world. So you uh, provided lots of benefits and advantages of handwritten notes as you were talking there. But one that stands out to me, going back to 2017, you were, when you first sent out that first batch, I think you were describing, did you say doctors? Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah. So the other big benefit here is, to me, sounds like you're able to access markets that are difficult to access through other marketing, particularly digital marketing mediums. Are mm -hmm. there any industries that stand out to you that are more easily accessible or more responsive to handwritten notes than others in particular? You know, it's, it's high ticket item industries where it just makes absolute sense. So if you think of like the, the car industry, political, right. nonprofits, you know, where each client's worth thousands or tens of thousands of dollars, you know, home service, that type of stuff. It's a no brainer. Um, it's, you know, that $3 handwritten note or, or less, depending on how many you send, you know, to acquire, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in new, in new clients or retain them. It's worth its weight in gold. Plus you just never know the the true uh, effect of it and where in the reach of it's going to, it's going to be because, you know, that, that high value client, you know, who feels respected or had a great customer experience is friends, you know, you know, birds of a feather flock together, right? They're mm. friends with people that will probably like your service as well. So they'll refer them. So you just, you, it's impossible to really measure like the magnitude of the effect of, you know, a handwritten note and building that relationship. But um, yeah, I would say high ticket price items for sure. You know, think about it, roof, solar, windows, car purchases, you know, nonprofits who run off of relationships and donations, political action committees who are, are raising money for, you know, their, their campaigns. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of use cases and niches. Just thinking the process through, what length of notes are people sending? Like, what do you recommend? What in your experience, what's working? Like, what's the, there must be a sweet spot for like the right length of note before it becomes a letter. Yeah. So we always, we always say short and sweet. So it's like a, you know, regardless of if you're using this for an acquisition tool or a retention tool, it's like mm. respect your recipient, recipient's time. I was just listening to this cool um, podcast as well on uh, Entrepreneurs on Fire. Yeah. And it was about copy. It's about, you know, writing the, the right copy. And it's this guy who is a professional in, in word copy said that if you don't have, you know, the attention of your of your recipient or your user within three seconds, they don't even read it anyways. They just start skimming. And then mm -hmm. after seven seconds, they'll stop reading. So you really only have their attention span for three to seven seconds. So if you think about that, that first sentence needs to be very impactful. So give them a reason to keep on reading. Um, and then make sure that you're giving them value. So we always say make an introduction. So who you are, what company you're with, call to action or a value proposition. So like how you can help them and why you know, it's important that they mm -hmm. call you and then make an ask. So something like, you know, can we book an appointment, you know, or here's a $50 gift card if, you know, for whatever, booking an appointment, something like that. So for, for acquisition, we always say, yeah, um, introduction, call to action, make an ask. And then on the retention side, we literally just say, like, say thank you. Some people like to upsell 
and say like, hey, thanks for your purchase. Here's 10% off your next purchase. You know, it's kind of like a soft upsell, but we always say, just say thank you. Um, the law of reciprocity will take over and um, they'll come back, you know, for years to come. Hmm. I don't know if this, there's any truth to this. I'm I'm curious to know your experience of it, but I was thinking about myself and like ha- when I've had to handwrite things in the past um, in comparison to writing emails and messages all day. And I was thinking that one of the benefits of handwritten notes might be that you actually take a moment before you, I know it's a slightly different mechanism, but essentially before you put your words in ink, you're maybe a little bit more extra careful than you would be if you fired off a message in LinkedIn or you know a messaging system of some sort. Yeah, is that the case? You know, we we get asked all the time to help with copy. Right. Um, I mean, there's so many cool tools out there nowadays that are like AI, like copywriters that help you develop really strong copy. I don't I don't think it's ever become that like a problem. Like people kind of like analysis paralysis on it too much. Yep. You know, it's like they obsess about it, and it's just like. You you have to keep it so simple. You got to think like that was another thing this guy in the Entrepreneurs on Fire podcast said. Like you have to like talk to them at like a third to seventh grade level. Don't use big words. Mm. Use easy to understand words. Like make it super simple to understand. Um, but people do get obsessed with that. What I always tell our clients is like it's not so much the 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 messaging because they won't remember that. They're going to remember that you sent them something in the mail that was handwritten. So. Um, if you can, you know, hook them with something small in the message, that's great. But what's really impactful is that it's the handwritten card with the handwritten envelope with that real stamp on it. That's going to stand out and make them remember you when they need that service to call you back. Have people tried the handwritten note method on you to gain your availability or no, access to no. you in any way? I've had one person who used my service to send me a card. It was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> and our, our office caught it and they're like, look, this guy is trying to book a meeting with you. It's really funny. Well, shout out um, to them. That's that's genius. That's smart. Yeah, <laughs> it was really funny. But, um, you know, I've seen some people spend a ton of money on like packages and like video books and like gifts. And it was like, I obviously like it's obvious that you use the service. But, right. you know, it looks like you spent 50 bucks on this, like which is, you know, a decent amount of money to try to book a meeting or or, you know, engage us. But it's like, I know you use the service, right? Like, why wouldn't you just sit down and send a handwritten note? It's more authentic. You know, it costs a lot less. And it's, in, at least in my perception, I'm going to think that you did it unless yeah. you used our service, right? And that's going to be more impactful to me than somebody who uses like some gifting platform or sends me something from Amazon, right? It's just like, cool, but like, I don't know. It's just not authentic, and yeah. I think in the, in today's world, we need more authenticity. And on the topic of authenticity and in closing, um, it can be, yeah, for one of your clients or if there's anything more general in the industry related to handwritten notes, any examples to just close this out for our listeners, describing your favorite examples of how handwritten notes have been used in an authentic way to generate business? What comes to mind? You know, I, what, what I've I heard recently from one of our clients was a, uh, was an agency that does like full service marketing and what they do is they use our service but um they'll actually print like a like a hundred dollar gift card on the top inside flap (laughs) and and they'll offer a hundred dollar gift card for a meeting and you know they're that confident in their service that they'll pay anybody a hundred bucks to take a meeting so what they do is they have like a handwritten envelope a handwritten card and then on the inside they have that little you know picture of a hundred dollar gift card and say hey you know we'd love to the opportunity to you know show you what we can do for you and for your time we'll give you a hundred bucks and they tell us it works like like it's like gangbusters it's fire (laughs) they have more leads than they can deal with and they i mean they only do one one order a month with us so it's like it's pretty cool to you know i i get excited when i hear people having success with our platform because i knew i knew it was something um that was special you know, a few years ago, but at the end of the day, you know, for anybody listening to this, it's, it's, it's much more important to say, thank you. Um, that's going to have a, a lot longer lasting effect on your business. You're going to get people bought into you, be loyal to your brand, um, refer their friends, refer their family. And that's much more powerful than some type of prospecting campaign. It may help you grow your business, but to retain and, and grow a business that people are loyal to. You got to have, you know, something 
really special built with your clients in that relationship. Thanks so much for your time today. Uh, you've introduced me, so I'm really interested in technology, copywriting, and everything you've discussed to me is like right in the intersection of those two things. So you've introduced me to a marketing mechanism or a sales mechanism that's actually completely new to me, which doesn't really happen too much, particularly on this podcast. So I've really enjoyed this episode and I'm definitely going to go away and learn more about what you do. If other people want to do that, where can they find you? Yeah, it's a, well, I appreciate that. Um, I'm on LinkedIn for basically all day. I'm just Rick Elmore, E-L-M-O-R-E. I can be found on LinkedIn. But I highly, highly recommend, even if you're just remotely interested in just seeing this technology, is just going to Simply Noted, how it's spelled, S as in Sam, I-M as in Mary, P-L-Y, noted.com. And go to the business page and just request a sample kit. Um, we do a really good job of, of sending. I mean, our sample kit costs about $20 per kit to put together. Um, it's a 10 by 13 package with tons of writing samples, flyers, brochures, case studies, handwriting styles. Um, it's a really in-depth package. And we send that to you for free. Yeah, just go to simplynoted.com and just request that kit. And then what usually happens is, you know, if it's not something that somebody uses right now, is they'll come back like three to six months later when they have an idea, you know, and then we'll help them down the line. Rick, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. This has been the Internet Marketing Podcast. Take care.